Hi there, join me in this video when I'm going to go on a balloon flight. Now behind me, just here in the field, they're setting up ready for the balloon flight. Now this balloon flight was a present to me from my wife for our 15th wedding anniversary. So it's taken quite a while to arrange this because we had to wait for the ideal weather. But today, um, the weather conditions are great. There's not a lot of wind. There's a high cloud base and it's nice and fine. So we're gonna get up in the balloon. Um, I'm gonna see what photographs they can take. But either way, I know I'm really gonna enjoy my photography. So the first process is to get the balloon out of the bag. Now at the moment the balloon is on the back of a trailer, so they're driving the car away. So the balloon is emerging out of the bag as the car goes forward. And once it's out of the bag, then it's just a case of stretching it out as flat as it can and untying the straps that are wrapped around the balloon. So the guys have just unpacked the envelope out of the bag. They've um, untied it and very shortly will be due to inflate the balloon. What they do first is instead of putting hot air into the envelope, they use some fans that are powered by effectively lawnmower motors. Now you might have just heard one um, start now. Um, that's gonna blow air into the, the balloon to inflate it. But the guy was just saying how dangerous it can be because they're basically a carbon fiber propeller. And if you get too close to them, um, they are very dangerous. They even killed somebody in Australia a little while ago when a lady got a scarf caught in the fan. So you can see now that the fans are blowing air into the envelope. Now at this point, they're not trying to inflate the envelope. All they're trying to do is straighten it out so it lies completely flat on the floor. Because what they're gonna do before they inflate the balloon properly is they're going to do a safety briefing, which is a really important legal requirement when you go up on a balloon flight. Great stuff, morning everybody, Smithley. Uh, I think I've met you all now. I'm John, I'm the pilot. Our crew this morning, we've got Dave on the left there. Morning. And we've got Chris. And Chris is a new boy. It's his first day out today, uh, ballooning or crewing. Uh, so, um, so we need to be gentle with him. Uh, if he doesn't know, if he looks like he doesn't know what he's doing, it's because he doesn't know what he's doing. Uh, but he's going to be learning uh, to race his knots. So I've not included the entire safety talk in this video, but basically John went through all the requirements during takeoff, throughout the flight, and then at landing, and what we could expect throughout the flight. So once the safety talk was over, it was then time to inflate the balloon. So we've just had the safety talk. Um, very shortly, I'm gonna be getting into the balloon. There's gonna be a very short window of time once the balloon has come on to when the balloon goes upright then we're gonna to have to get into the balloon fairly quickly. Once the balloon is inflated with fresh air, then it's time to warm up that air using the burners. Now there are four burners in total and each burner is supplied by its own cylinder of gas. Generally speaking, during our flight, the pilot only used one burner. That was all that was required on this day. Um, but the rest are there either as a backup or should it be needed as extra heat in case we needed to rise more quickly. Um, once the balloon was warm enough, then the envelope started to rise off the floor into a horizontal position. And very shortly after this, it was time to get on board. Okay, Very shortly after getting aboard, we were airborne. Now John has 30 years of experience flying balloons and over 4,000 hours of flight time, but at this stage, the direction of the balloon is determined completely by the wind because there's no steering. Now winds do travel at different speeds and directions depending on the height of the balloon, so this makes every flight unique. Now what's interesting is that it's warmer up in the air because you don't get any wind chill because you're traveling at the same speed as a wind and the burners do give off a substantial amount of heat. Good for 
While flying, John was paying very close attention to livestock on the ground because most animals and wildlife get spooked by the sight of the balloon. Now he did give an example of how cows in a shed could stampede at the sight of a balloon and this could clearly be very hazardous for the safety of the animals. And you can see here from how these sheep are reacting that they're really unnerved by the balloon even though at this point we were flying at around 2,000 feet. We got up to a height of 2,457 feet and at this height the wind speed was about 15 miles per hour. However, at this height, while you could see a long way, you could make out details on the ground more clearly when you were lower. So John made the decision to take the balloon down and it was at this point that I realised it was going to be very difficult to get any really good photographs because a shot of the view turned out to just be endless fields and the only possibility really of a good shot was to point the camera straight down but this required the luck of flying over something that was interesting. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, we're at 2,457 feet. That's all we're doing there. So come down, just letting the balloon cool off. I'm not doing anything dramatic, I'm not opening any vents or anything like that. I'm just letting the balloon naturally cool. It cools very quickly. We're dropping down at the moment at uh, 12 feet per second, 720 feet a minute. Mm -hmm. We're quite a fast rate of descent. So when John spotted a large field that contained no livestock, he demonstrated the control that it has over the balloon and brought it down to a height of around 10 metres. We skimmed over the field for a while which was quite breathtaking and at this height there certainly was a lot more of interest to see and I got a few photographs as well. Now we did fly over this old windmill that has been converted into a house and by coincidence someone who was also on the flight knows the people who live there. So the ram building at the side is an extension with an eco roof. About an hour into the flight, John started to look for a landing site. Now there were many considerations to think about. The field needed to contain no livestock or crops, it needed easy access to the road, and power lines, electric fences and hedges and all kinds of things like that needed to be spotted and identified before the landing site could be confirmed. So once John found the perfect field, he did say that he'd never landed there before and probably never would again because of being at the mercy of the wind. Before we were on the ground, the support vehicles had already arrived at the site. We saw them driving down the road as we came into land. Now, while the balloon can't arrange for permission to land, the support crew set off to find the owner to ask permission to drive onto the field. And also, they gave him a bottle of whiskey as a thank you. <laughs> yeah, I think well.
So we're down, that was a really amazing flight. It's so serene when you're up in the air. Unfortunately, the photography wasn't absolutely spectacular because you get great views, but it doesn't actually translate into great pictures. I did take some pictures pointing straight down, which were probably the most effective, but I don't think I've got anything extra special, but it was an amazing um, experience. And I'm glad you came along with me. If you have enjoyed that video, do let me know down below in the comments or nip over to my Instagram account, that's at Dioctum Photography. Leave me a comment there and you can also see lots of my photographs. Now, if you like what I do on the channel and want to help support me, you can also visit my Teespring store. There I've got a range of merchandise on offer, so head off over there, check that out, and a purchase really does help me out. But you don't have to spend any money at all to support the channel. You can do that simply by clicking like, subscribe, and the bell notifications, because it really helps me out and it makes sure that you don't miss out on any future content. Watch out for next week's video, that goes live on Sunday. In the meantime, go and check out this video just up here, but all that's left now is to say, stay safe, and I'll see you soon.